doing? How's everybody doing? Hey, why don't you stand and worship with us? I'm gonna. Do, this is one of those things I never have to do inside, but if you have to use the restroom, it's over here to these doors over here. It says Berean students. It's weird, but I'm just imagining someone walking in front of us going, where's the bathroom? So, and then there's coffee over here. I know what everybody wants, hot coffee on a really hot day. Hey, who's thankful to be outside this morning? Man, I am as well. We're gonna praise the king this morning. And if you need the words, all you gotta do is open up that little pamphlet they handed you. The words are in there this morning. curse of sin is broken. There's a reason why the darkness runs from the light. There's a reason why we stand in no forgiveness. Jesus is alive. Sing, there's a reason. There's a reason why we are not over. There's a reason why we sing all through the night. There's a reason why our hope remains eternal. Jesus is alive. Praise the King. Praise the King. He is risen. Praise the King. He's alive.
yourself. I don't know if you noticed, Pastor Dan hurt himself. So you don't need to make fun. <laughs> well, that's probably going to happen multiple times. You want to just stand there? Be a good friend. Be a good friend. Yeah, I had surgery Tuesday. That's a prayer, uh, praise uh, report. Uh, they got me in quickly, so got my bicep kind of repaired, but uh, I'm gimping around today. Also, praise, uh, because I have this sling on, I didn't have to do anything today. Uh, so... Yay! Isaiah is celebrating. He has the quiet celebration. I'm going to have to flip that over at some point. Hey guys, we are here uh, doing, um, I don't know if this is our third or fourth outdoor service. I absolutely love it. Has, has God been incredible to us or what with the weather on these things? Absolutely perfect weather. Um, you know, it's a little bit cool. I'm, I'm getting to where I'm older and I like it really warm, so warmer will be better. But uh, maybe July 3rd. We have another one of these coming up in July. Make sure you are here for that as well. Uh, but we are here, it's Memorial Day weekend. This is a day that uh, we started celebrating as a nation all the way back in 1869. At the time, it was called Decoration Day. And uh, it was to remember those who had lost their life in the Civil War. Uh, since then, we, we've, uh, by act of Congress, uh, have this, this last uh, uh, weekend in May, uh, Memorial Day weekend, where we remember all of those men and women who have given their lives uh, to maintain the freedoms that we enjoy in our country. So before we do anything else, I'd like us to just observe a, a brief moment, moment of silence as we remember those who have gone uh, and, and have given it all for our, for our freedoms. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for the freedoms that we have through you for the freedoms that you have given us. And God, we have also thank you for those men and women who have sacrificed everything for us to maintain those freedoms. We thank you for the families that have sent them. We thank you for the sacrifice, for the pain that they have endured. Help us, God, as a, as a nation to remember that those freedoms come from you and that our freedoms are more than just temporary freedoms that we enjoy in a country, but eternal freedom from sin, from suffering, and from death. We thank you for the sacrifice that you have given us in your son, Jesus Christ. God, we pray for this day that you will be glorified, that you will be honored, and that as a, as a, a result, we will all take a step closer to you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. King David realized the need to remember. And in uh, Psalm 103, if you have your Bible or your phone, if you want to turn there, we have to David rehearsing some truths about God. The first 19 verses say the following. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all our iniquity, who heals all our diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you, with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles the lord works righteousness and justice for all those all who are oppressed he made known his ways to moses his acts to the people of israel the lord is merciful and gracious slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love he will not always chide nor will he keep his anger forever he does not deal with us according to our sins nor repay us according to our iniquities for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him, for he knows your frame, our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass, he flourishes like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it and is gone, and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to, the ch to children's children, to those who keep his covenant. And remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. I think I can hold on to it. Thank you. 
David understood the need to rehearse these truths about the goodness of God. Because if we're honest, there's a lot of struggle and difficulty that we're going to face in our lives. So what do we do when we find ourselves in a situation where we're struggling or facing uncertainty or facing any number of things? We remember the goodness of God. So today on a weekend that is uh, earmarked to remember, I challenge you, church, to remember and rehearse the goodness of God, just like David does here in this psalm. In addition to this, in our service today, we're going to remember a few different things as we seek to take a step closer to Christ through remembering, remembering his goodness. I also want to challenge us to remember those people who have sacrificed for our freedoms so that we can do something like on a Sunday morning, stand outside and proclaim the goodness of God without fear of any kind of persecution. That's not just, that's not the, the, the truth for everybody in this world. So we're also going to remember those Christians right now who are facing persecution and also remembering Christians who are facing uncertain futures, specifically our brothers and sisters in Christ in Ukraine. You're going to hear from a couple of them today. And then finally, I want us to remember those who have no voice, the voices of the unborn, as we're going to talk about that in this service as well. So that's going to be our service. I invite you to stand as we continue to sing praises to our Lord. We're going to be singing, Yes, I Will. I count on one thing. Sing God that never fails, will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. Sing God is never late. He's working all things out. He's working all things out. Oh, and yes, I will let you
morning. What a wonderful thing that we are filling these neighborhoods with praises to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Yeah, and so hopefully we can be uh, salt and light in that way. Hey, I'm up here with my good friend Joe, and uh, Joe is a veteran. And if, if there's any other veterans here in the house right now, you served in the armed forces, would you stand right now? Can we honor you quickly? Stand on up. Come on. Let's honor them. Thank them for their service. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, Joe, could you just introduce yourself? Who are you? How long have you been a Berean? Yeah, my name is Joe Kinzel, and my wife Stephanie and I have been attending Berean since October of last year. Awesome. And what do you do for a living? I teach American history. Well, very appropriate, right? So, as a, as a veteran, what does Memorial Day mean to you? Well, M Memorial Day is, is very sacred to us veterans because uh, we realize when we serve, we're just standing on the sh uh, shoulders of giants that have gone before us and paid the ultimate sacrifice so that we can enjoy the freedoms and the liberties that we have today. So Memorial Day is about sacrifice. It's about me as an American and as a Christian being able to celebrate all of the freedoms that they paid for. They gave up all of their uh, tomorrows so that I can enjoy the freedoms that I have today. That's so good. And, and I think there's something that we know through a Christian worldview that is godly about sacrifice. Amen. You know, living a life that is for others. And that's why we call it service, you know, the armed service. And so what a great day. I think it's a Christian thing to celebrate people who've given their lives in service. And I've got a verse here. John 15, 13 says this. Greater love has no man than this, that he lay down his life for a friend. You know, what does this passage of scripture, you know, mean to you through the eyes of a veteran? Yeah, well, obviously the, the, the Christian connotation is that Christ gave his life for me. And that sort of blows my mind because, you know, I lived a lot of my life not believing that I was worthy of that sacrifice and and that's the great thing about christianity is christ first loved us and uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense but thank god it's true uh, as a veteran that's those are the heroes the the men and women who served our country first responders uh, they are willing to put their lives on the line for, for our freedoms for our safety uh, that is something that is just terribly honorable for, you know to, to live that type of a life of sacrifice. Uh, and, and so for me, that's, uh, that's what that means as a veteran. All, all the men and women who fought for this country and, and ran towards the sound of gunfire, and they did it uh, for love of country and love of their, their fellow brothers and sisters. That's so good, yeah. And you know we need to, I think, show love and care, compassion to those um, in our lives who are, are veterans. And I think of those who've gone through really difficult trauma and how can we just be a, a community and a family to those who've gone through that? And as we think about Memorial Day through the lens of being a follower of Jesus, and you know, you kind of touched on this already, but what should Memorial Day mean to a Christian, and, and how should we, um, you know, honor this day? Well, uh, I think C.S. Lewis said it best: "We are in enemy-occupied territory, and we've been dropped behind lines to wage a great campaign of sabotage." So that needs to be our focus as Christians. Uh, this world's not our home. Uh, we are strangers in a strange land. However, God has blessed us with the honor and the privilege of being born in, in the greatest civilization in the history of planet Earth because no other, no other civilization, has, no other country has given more rights and freedoms to their people than America has. So uh, what do we do with that? And I think there needs to be a balance uh, as Christians, I think we should be involved in what's going on uh, in our everyday life, whether that's uh, politics or running for a local school board or whatever. Yet at the same time, we need to keep the focus on, you know, what's really important, and that is serving Christ. So there's got to be a balance. That's so good. We have, ultimately, we are citizens of heaven. Uh, this America, you know, this country is not our home. And we've even got, you're going to be hearing from a second, some of our brothers and sisters from Ukraine. And just what a blessing it is that we are actually closer family to them, you know, because of our relationship with Jesus. And so if you would, we're going to continue in worship. If you would stand, but I want to, before we do, I'd love to just pray uh, for our veterans or those here who have maybe lost someone, you know. And this is a, this is a sober day for those or, or veterans who had 
friends, you know, that they, they lost. And so would you stand with me as we just pray? And if you've got a veteran around you, you could just, man, put an arm on their shoulder, thank them for their service as I pray. Let's pray together. Father God, I thank you for Jesus who modeled a life of sacrifice. Lord, you laid your life down on the cross for us that by faith we may be saved. So Lord, I just pray that we would be a people who live sacrificial lives for the sake of the gospel. I thank you for our veterans who've modeled this through their service in the military. And Lord God, I pray that you would bless them, that you'd hold them tight, that you'd keep them. Lord, I pray for those here who maybe have lost somebody. And Memorial Day is a day of grief. Lord, would you comfort them? And Lord, would you just be near to them today? We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
am so pleased to introduce good friends from Brovery, Ukraine, Grace Baptist Church. Friends for 25 years. This is Sveta Medianik. Her husband, Boris, was the initial pastor at Grace Baptist. We first met in 1995, and Brian has been sending teams there for the last 25 years. We are grateful to have you here today. Do you, just a couple of words. Just. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm so glad to be here. It's like a dream for me. And yes, 25 years, it was the best years for our church. It's true. And I thank, first time I thank to God for these years. And I thank all people from your church who helped for these good, good days. We had adventure camp for children. We had uh, English school for adults. We have special camp for special in need kids. It is amazing for our church. It's, it's big, big God's blessing. And second, I want I want I, I like to say thank you and thank you for everyone who prayed for my husband and thank for your help for us. Uh, it's hard to, to to tell about this, but I still trust in our God. Um, Pretty good for someone who didn't want to speak English in front of all of you. Yeah. Well, Pastor Boris went to be with the Lord back in December of 2020 from COVID. And so we're just grateful to have you here now. Sveta and her children, son-in-law Eugene, daughter Miroslava, grandson Martin down here, they have just an incredible amazing story of how they're standing here today. And uh, uh, so we don't have to do all the transit. I'm gonna ask Eugene if he would just tell a bit of, uh, of Sveta's story, how she got here. You know, here in the US, we saw Russia building up their military along the border of Ukraine. What did you think? What did Ukrainians think when they saw that happening at the time? Yeah, thank you very much for opportunity to share so uh, from the start of the war and before that no one really believed that the war is going to happen we knew that there is a tension between Russia and Ukraine but no one really thought that in 21st century something like this can happen so when the war started we were shocked but we definitely know that God wasn't shocked uh, and he is still ruling okay you know, how did Sveta, what, what were the steps in, in getting out of Ukraine? Yeah, it, it's been a uh, big God's blessing how he kept uh, them safe. So when the war started on 20, uh, 24th of February, they've been in Brovery uh, for, th for three days and they made a little shelter in their basement where they took a couch and some water to drink and some food so while they were over there, the situation started to get worse and worse uh, around the Kiev and Brovery. So they decided to go to a village, which is about uh, 80 miles away from Kiev, and they thought it would be a safe place. But when they came over there, they spent another week there, and they've seen some airplane fights uh, in the skies. So uh, next decision was to go to Lviv, a city where uh, son Vanya is living uh, and his wife and it's a city closer to Poland border and they decided that it would be a good uh, opportunity to go there and be in a safer place but when they came to, uh, to Lviv originally uh, the road from Kiev to Lviv takes about six hours but because of the war and all the fights it, it took them 34 hours by car to come to Lviv. Uh, so they've been in Lviv for two days 
And uh, during that time, there was a lot of sirens and they needed to go from fifth floor where they stayed down in the basement. And it's basically not the basement, but just underground where it was uh, not a good conditions. Uh, so later on, after two days spending in LV, they decided that uh, uh, Mira's mom and sister-in-law and niece, they will move to Poland and find a safer place over there. Uh, so they came to Poland and it took them a while to get there as well. But God is good. Uh, he, he, he like took them in the hands and moved them to Poland. And uh, they found uh, a safe place in Poland uh, and stayed with another woman over there in a small apartment, uh, one room, all, all, all three together. And then uh, while they were in Poland, uh, me and my wife Miroslava, we were in uh, in the United States already, and we've heard about an opportunity for Ukrainians to come to United States through a special program through the border of uh, Mexico, through Mexico, and uh, we just discussed it with our family, and we thought that it would be a great chance uh, to come here and really reunite together and be together during these tough times. And uh, it's been uh, night in Poland, and when they woke up, uh, we already had a tickets for them, and we sent the tickets to them. And uh, in two weeks, they came uh, to United States through the Mexican border, which was legal. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> it was legal, uh, and uh, they came, and, and now they're staying with us in Kansas City, uh, Missouri, where. By, by God's grace and blessing, we have uh, an apartment to stay for free, and uh, everyone has uh, his own private space to stay. Genia, how is it that you're in Kansas City? Because you and Mira live in Kyiv, Ukraine. Yes, we live in Kyiv, Ukraine, and uh, we, we run a basketball ministry, a Christian basketball academy in Kyiv, Ukraine, and uh, we scheduled uh, a trip to United States to participate with our partners in that conference. Uh, our partners are Fellowship of Christian Athletes, so they invited us to come to a conference uh, to San Antonio, Texas. So we came, Mira, uh, I, and, and Martin, we came to United States uh, February 10th, uh, well, 14 <laughs> days before the war started in Ukraine. And uh, uh, we were on the third day of the conference, uh, when when we uh, started to get messages from our family back in Ukraine that the war broke out in Ukraine. And uh, yeah, we've been with uh, Fellowship of Christian Athletes on that conference and they just told us, we wanna take care of you guys, so why don't you come to Kansas City and we will try and provide a housing for you and place where you can still be active in the ministry. So that's how we ended up uh, in Kansas City. Okay. Now, er everybody here is in the United States now. What does the future look like for you? What, 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 are you, what are your thoughts? What decisions do you have to make? Yeah, that's a very good question. We uh, feel very blessed to be here. We feel uh, we see God's hand in every step how he kept us safe. Uh, but uh, our heart is with uh, people of Ukraine and uh, we pray that as soon as possible we can come back and uh, serve uh, people of Ukraine. So uh, we're expecting a second baby to arrive in August. So uh, when the baby will be born, uh, if Ukraine will be an option to go back, we want to go back and because we have a ministry, we have a church over there. So we just want to be back as soon as possible. So we need your prayers for wisdom from God and clarity of next steps for us as a family. But this is kind of a short term that we have to go to Ukraine or to go to Moldova, which is neighboring country of Ukraine or any other countries in Europe to continue serving uh, to people we love and value. Amen, thank you. You know, when that war broke out, and it escalated, I wondered, 
many times I wondered whether I would ever see my good friends again. And yesterday the doorbell rang and there was Sveta standing on my front porch. I knew she was coming, but to see her standing there and, and just to know, I mean, Zinja can't go into all the details of how God worked. Now, you know, God doesn't always work in, in positive ways like that in our lives. Uh, but he certainly has in, in Sveta and her, and her family to get them here. Let's, uh, let's pray together, all right? Father, we want to pray for the nation of Ukraine. They are in a difficult time. Uh, the, the size difference between Ukraine of uh, you know, 45 million people and, and Russia, 180 million people, uh, it's just unbelievable. Nobody thought Ukraine could hold out this long, yet with, with the help of the United States and NATO, they are able to, uh, to hold their own. And we pray that you will continue to uh, encourage, strengthen, and provide for them to do that. Uh, we pray that you will bring defeat to the enemy. Uh, Lord God, for uh, Sveta, the Medianic family, for uh, Eugene and Mira, giving them wisdom about the future and, and what that holds, where you will lead and guide them, we trust them into your hands now. Thank you for them being with us today. I pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Let's celebrate and give all glory to God this morning. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm was born.
Good morning, Berean family and guests. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, if you've volunteered or worked in a church at all, you know that the ordinary rhythms of church can be difficult on holiday weekends. And I'm just extraordinarily grateful to be part of a church that does extraordinary things on weekends like this. Uh, for Pastor Dan leading them this way, Isaiah getting here, getting going, Pastor Bill and Pastor Phil interviewing people. This has just been an encouraging morning. So I hope you've been encouraged as well. My name's John. I'm the finance and HR director here. Um, you might be most familiar with me from playing a supporting role in the band or bringing a business report. But today I get to talk with you about one of our ministry partners. And this is kind of a rare, rare treat. Um, to help with this, I'm going to invite Lynn Ernsberger to stage. Ah, uh, there you are. Um, as she joins me, I'll let you know that I not only believe in the missional effort that she's going to share with you. Uh, grab this microphone right here, maybe. And come over here. That'd be great. Um, but I'm supremely confident that this is a woman that knows how to pray, is incredibly patient, is abundantly kind, and is as tough as they come. And if you think that I'm being hyperbolic or, in, or am ill-informed, rest assured, these things I know are true because God knew she would need those graces to raise me. Um, so thanks for joining me on stage, Mom. <clears throat> now, she's not up here to give parenting advice, so that would be interesting. Um, so I do want to turn our attention to what she's up here for. She's, she's up here to share about one of our closest to home ministry partners, Richland Pregnancy Services. Uh, so without further ado, I'll invite you to let us know what Richland Pregnancy Services is and how you're involved. Okay. First of all, I want to say it's always been and always will be a privilege and an honor to have John as my son. Yeah. And I also want to thank all of you for giving me the opportunity to be up here because it's very humbling to know to, that I can follow, you know, in mission, not just abroad, but at home. And I know many of you have helped serve in the ministry, um, whether it would be from prayer support, financial gifts, or actual boots on the ground volunteer time. And so I thank you so much for being here and allowing me to be here today. I'm gonna go by my bullet points just to keep me concise. There's a lot I could say about Rich and Pregnancy Services. It's near and dear to my heart, but I know it's getting towards the end. It might get a little skittish, so I'm gonna stick to script here if that's okay. Um, Rich and Pregnancy Services is a place where women and men can come to get medical and um, support services when they are faced with an unplanned or unexpected pregnancy. Um, what sets our services apart from other services in the community is the fact that while they are there, they will experience the love of Jesus Christ and they will know and be pointed to where the hope comes from for an eternal life and transformational um, life. There are 20,000 abortions in Ohio each year. When a client comes to us, they get a free pregnancy test confirmation, a free ultrasound, and statistics show, and I've seen it with my own eyes, I've been in the room when it's happened, that once a mama sees her baby on the screen, whether she's thinking about abortion or not, 
80, up to 80% of the time they choose life for that baby, for that baby to be born, God's purpose and plan in that baby on this earth today. Um, we then uh, follow and continue to mentor them for through their entire pregnancy and up to two years after the baby is born. And this is for the moms and the dads. We do a lot to incorporate and include the dads, let them know they're part um, of this family and help them to know how they can lead and guide their family um, in the hope of Jesus Christ. As John said, I am Lynn Ernstberger and I'm the client service director at Richland Pregnancy Services. I work alongside the many volunteers that come and um, serve with love in their hearts um, and show them who, where they get their hope from and try to help them understand where they can get that same hope. Um, so I kind of like to call us, we're the boots to the, on the ground part of the ministry. Um, and that's kind of who we are and who I am. Okay. She's doing great, isn't she? They're going through a, yeah, cheer on. They're going through an executive director change, and the executive director would normally be up here. She loves working with the clients and the volunteers, but this is very uncomfortable for her, so I appreciate you, you encouraging her. Um, now, you know this about me. They may not know this right. about me. I have a lot of parachurch ministry experience. One of my earliest jobs was with Youth for Christ. I founded and directed a, uh, an association of churches for a time. And one of the questions that I always have about a parachurch organization is how do they work alongside the local church? A parachurch ministry, what you guys are doing is a great, uh, is a great opportunity for the Lord to, to work in someone's life. How does Richland Pregnancy Services seek to work with the local church, a church like Berean? Right. Well, as a parachurch organization, we can build relationships with clients we can teach them, we can listen to them, we can disciple them to a point, but we are not the church. We need you, the church, to step alongside and we can help build those relationships so they're ready to come and be um, greeted here at the church so they can continue to grow um, in their faith as they are discipled by all of you, put into missional group, community groups per se, um, but just life um, groups to where they can see, they can learn, they can model, and they can grow deeper in their faith as well. So what we would do is we would refer them to you, especially after that two-year mark, if not before, hopefully before. Okay. So if someone's here today, and, and they're hearing these things, and they're prayerfully considering these things, and they feel compelled to become more involved, to help be that bridge between RPS and the church or, or to meet other needs, what can they do today uh, to become more involved? Oh, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> what we're asking today is to think about the fact that never has there been more controversy about what could or should be done with an unplanned pregnancy or a preborn baby. Pregnancy centers and churches around the world are rallying right now, um, and they need to part together, together even more than before um, because those who don't have a voice really do need us to be the voice on their behalf. Um, on, in James 127, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after the orphans and the widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. We need to, you to help us care for the least of these, to give a voice to the voiceless. We need your continued prayer support. That is the most subs, you know, substantial thing that you can do for us. We need prayer. It's a battle. It's a war out there on a daily basis. We need to be founded on prayer. We need more boots on the ground volunteers that can come and just share the love of Christ to the um, girls and guys that walk into our center. Um, and finally, we are so grateful that you already are financial supporters and partners with us at Richland Pregnancy Services. 
um, some of the ways you can continue to do that even above and beyond um, what you give to Varan that helps support us as a ministry is next weekend we have a walk for life in North Lake Park um, there's information that you can find about that if you'd like to put a team together or come join us there um, our gala is in uh, the fall and that's where you can learn more about who we are where we are or what we're doing and what our vision is from that point on but most importantly most importantly and so easy today you can pick up a baby bottle it used to be called baby bottle boomerang now it's called change for life but you can pick up a baby bottle fill that bottle up um, with change checks whatever you the lord leads you to place in that bottle and then bring it back to Berean, and they'll get it to us at Richland Pregnancy Services. It's one of our second largest fundraising efforts across the community with many churches being involved. Okay. So to reiterate uh, a little bit of what she shared there at the end, uh, you can get involved by, by praying for Richland Pregnancy Services, praying for unplanned pregnancies, praying for, uh, for Berean and our relationship with them. And then um, they have literature on a number of different things they have coming up, but most specifically today, they have baby bottles that, uh, that are part of their fundraising effort. So they want you to grab a baby bottle if that's something you're interested in helping raise funds for and see how much money, whether it's coins or cash or checks or whatever you can fit in that baby bottle and bring it back to Berean, um, which is a great transition. I'll let you go. Thank you for coming up and sharing. Just one thing to you. Uh oh, I can't. Can I tell her though? I can't tell her no. Can you? Yeah. She wants to share one more thing. Just know there are volunteers back there that can answer any questions you might have about us. Yeah. Okay, now I'll take that squeeze. Oh, jeez. Uh, another one. That's how I get too. <laughs> Thank you. So by back there, she means that that tent that's uh, kind of farthest from me here has the baby bottles, has the literature, has volunteers to talk to. That's where we want you to go if you want to uh, learn more about Richland Pregnancy Services or how you can get involved. She mentioned, or mentioned that Richland Pregnancy Services is one of our regular mission partners. Um, so you guys hear a lot that 20 cents of every dollar that's given to the, the general fund goes to missions. Uh, part of that 20% is, is where we're able to send them a monthly check and help them with their what they're doing. Uh, giving today can be done at this white tent closest to me. So I'm doing the, the stewardess thing now, I guess. Um, closest to me here is our, is our information desk and uh, where giving is happening today. Um, another thing that we have that you can do after the service, there's all kinds of tents to go to. It's awesome, guys. Uh, behind me here, the students are providing a meal for donation. I think that those donations are gonna offset the cost of mission efforts that they're doing this summer. Uh, so if you wanna grab some food from students and, uh, and donate to that effort, that's kind of behind me here. And then while we're really excited about all these, these missional efforts we have, we don't wanna neglect uh, to be hospitable if you're a little bit newer. If this is something that's brand new to you today or you're just newer and you wanna know more about Berea and you wanna know how to get involved, you wanna know why this, these people would gather in this way, and you're just curious. This darker tent here in between the two white tents, I think it's got a big green new here, start here sign. Uh, go talk to those folks. We'd love to get to know you if you're, if you're new and curious about the things that go on at Berean. Um, so as we close, let me just close in prayer, and then I'm actually gonna end with a, a verse of uh, blessing from Second Peter, and then I'm, I'm going to dismiss you and you guys can all uh, race to the tents. So, God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the freedom that we do have to gather in this way. We thank you for um, making a way uh, for mission partners from, from Ukraine uh, to just those working with unplanned pregnancies to be here and to share stories of how you're working in lives. God, we pray that, um, that you would be uh, noticeably at work in, in all of these things that we've discussed today, that we would call attention to your goodness, that we would be sensitive to your goodness, that we would be overwhelmed by your love for us, that we would uh, enjoy loving you and enjoy loving each other. Be glorified by all we do and say for the rest of today. We pray this in your name.
Amen. Second Peter 2, or Second Peter 1, verse 2. May grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Go in peace, friends.